Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Hari Prasad, Associate Professor at the Department of Biophysics, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. Today, we are going to talk on the module Chemical Bonds and Types of Bonds under the paper Fundamentals of Biophysics. After completing this particular module, you should be able to understand Introduction to Chemical Bonds, Types of Chemical Bonds, strong bonds in which you have ionic, covalent bonds, metallic bonds and coordinate bonds. Then intramolecular interactions where you have weak bonds, under this category you have dipole-dipole interactions, hydrogen bonds, van der Waals interactions and its variants and salt bridges. And finally, you should be able to understand the comparison of energies associated with the intramolecular and intermolecular interactions. So, as an introduction, I would first say that chemical bonding is a very important entity and helps in understanding a lot of fundamental biophysical questions like how is a molecule or a polyatomic ion held together? What are the atoms distributed at strange angles? Why are molecules not flat? How are proteins and DNA structures stabilized? What is the main factor that attributes to chemical and physical properties of matter? How do drug molecules bind to various protein drug targets? What explains the existence of certain matter in different states like solids, liquids and gases? And what is the primary requisite for molecular functions in an organism? So having given this particular introduction, we now go on to understanding chemical bond. A chemical bond is an attraction between atoms and is a result of different behaviors of the outermost or the valence electrons of an atom that merge into each other seamlessly in various circumstances so that there is no clear line to be drawn between them. A chemical bond forms when atoms transfer or share electrons to achieve a stable octet. A bond will form if the energy of the aggregate is lower than that of separate atom entities. Almost all elements form chemical bonds easily which is why most matter is found in compounds. Bonding, the way the atoms are attracted to each other to form molecules, determines nearly all the chemical properties that you can think of in biological circumstances. Now, within these chemical bonds, you have various types. You have strong bonds and you have weak bonds. Under strong bonds, we have ionic bonds and covalent bonds. Within covalent bonds, we have two types, polar covalent bonds and non-polar covalent bonds. Then we have metallic bonds and coordinate bonds. And finally, under the category of weak bonds, we have dipole-dipole interactions, hydrogen bonds, Van der Waals forces like London dispersion, Keesum force and D by force and finally electrostatic forces or what you also called as salt bridges. Ionic bonding. Ionic compound results when a metal reacts with a non-metal. The ionic bond formed between two ions is by a transfer of valence electrons. These ionic compounds can form salts or crystals. They are usually hard solid at 22 degrees centigrade and have a high melting point temperatures. They are non-conductors of electricity in solid phase but good conductors in liquid phase or when dissolved in water. Below is an example of sodium forming an ionic bond with chloride to give sodium chloride. Examples of ionic bonds. Here below, there are three examples for ionic bonds 
which are formed by the transfer of valence electrons to create two oppositely charged ions. So sodium combines with chloride with the transfer of a valence electron to give sodium a positive charge and chloride a negative charge. Magnesium combines with oxygen giving rise to magnesium which is positive and oxygen with a negative charge. Calcium chloride is a combination of calcium and two chloride ions which has seven valence electrons. So calcium donates two electrons these two chlorine atoms to give rise to calcium chloride. Covalent bonds or molecular bonds sharing of electron pair atoms for balance of attractive and repulsive forces is what you call as a covalent bond. The mutual sharing of valence electrons between the participating atoms could be either of the same atoms or different elements. Covalent bond formed by the axial or end-to-end -end overlapping of atomic orbitals is called as a sigma bond and a bond formed by the sidewise or lateral overlapping of orbitals is called as a pi bond. A bond can result from a head-to-head -head overlap of atomic orbitals on neighboring atoms. Pi polymers like protein and synthetic polymers like nylon are very good examples which incorporate covalent bonds. Here below is an example of hydrogen and chlorine which combine to share a pair of valence electrons to give rise to HCl. Within covalent bonds you have two variants. It could be either a polar bond or a non-polar bond. Let us see what are the features of the polar type of covalent bond. This type of polar covalent bond is obtained by the unequal sharing of electrons between atoms in a molecule. The electrons shared by the atoms spends a greater amount of average time closer to the nucleus of one of the atoms than the other. This is because of the geometry of the molecule and the great electronegativity difference between the atoms. This results in a charge separation in the bond with the creation of a partial positive charge and a partial negative charge. To demonstrate, there is an example of two siblings who do not share toys. So you will finally have one of them who have more number of toys as compared to the other. In much the similar way, I have provided two examples, hydrogen, fluoride and water. Hydrogen combines with fluorine with a sharing of an electron when finally bestowing more partial negative charge on fluorine as compared to that of hydrogen which is left with a partial positive charge. In much the similar way, oxygen combines with two atoms of hydrogen to finally have a partial negative charge on itself and leaving behind partial positive charge on the two hydrogen atoms. Non-polar type of covalent bonds. These type of bonds occur because the electrons are shared evenly between identical atoms, therefore also called as diatomic element. If a covalent bond is formed between similar atoms, the shared pair of electrons lies almost in the center and the electron cloud is uniformly distributed around the atoms. The classical examples would be hydrogen, oxygen and chlorine. The incorporation of these type of nonpolar covalent bonds can be seen in peptide bond and phosphodiester bond. As an example, I have showed two siblings who are ready to share a toy between them accordingly. Hydrogen, oxygen and chlorine are formed because of the equal sharing of electrons 
between them to give rise to stable diatomic elements. Metallic bonds. Metallic bonds occur between atoms of a metal in the free state. The force of attraction that exists between charged metal ions and valence electrons. In this type of bonding, you see a sea of electrons that resides between many metal atoms and each atom in the metal donates one or more electrons to this particular C. The bond results because the metal atoms become somewhat positively charged due to the loss of their electrons while the electrons remain delocalized over a large system of covalent bonds that is without being a part of any given atom. This type of bonding is often very strong and is responsible for the tensile strength, malleability of metals, good electrical and thermal conductivity. Classical examples would be sodium, iron, aluminium, silver and copper. Metallic bonds give rise to a phenomena called as a sea of electrons. To understand, metallic crystal consists of an assemblage of positive charge occupying fixed positions and are arranged in a definitive pattern immersed in a sea of mobile valence electrons. In the figure below is demonstrated this type of assemblage of positive charge which is immersed in a well-defined sea of valence electrons. Coordinate bond or also known as dative bond. Coordinate bond is a two center, two electron covalent bond in which the two electrons that are shared are from the same atom. Coordinate bond is usually indicated by an arrow. The arrow that is indicated points from the atom donating the lone pair to the atom that is accepting it. Bonding of a metal ion to ligands involves this kind of interaction. A coordinate bond is typically seen in a reaction between ammonia and hydrogen chloride to form ammonium chloride. There exists a lone pair of electrons surrounding the nitrogen atom and this combines with HCl and the positive charge is got on this particular ammonium because of the hydrogen nucleus has moved to the nitrogen. Because of the loss of this particular hydrogen, the negative charge is bestowed on the chlorine because of the electron that is left behind. This clearly explains the phenomena of a coordinate bond. Now, we will try to understand about the concept of intermolecular interactions. What are intermolecular interactions? Intermolecular forces are those forces which mediate interaction between molecules, including the forces of attraction or repulsion which act between molecules and other types of neighboring particles. Students must understand to differentiate this from intramolecular interactions which are forces between atoms of the same molecule. Intermolecular forces are weaker than ionic or covalent bonds. Intermolecular forces are responsible for the physical state of a compound. They are responsible for holding together macromolecules such as DNA and proteins. In fact, water that is transported throughout the structure of a plant is by the concept of intermolecular forces of addition and cohesion. In modern day Airbus aircraft for example, about 30% of all compounds are joined using this concept of bonding technology. In fact, the soaps and detergents that we use at home help in cleaning of clothes by lowering the surface tension and breaking intermolecular forces so that they are more readily 
soaked into the pores of the clothes and help in removing the stains. Types of intermolecular interactions. We have dipole-dipole interaction, hydrogen bonds, Van der Waals forces and electrostatic forces which are also called as salt bridges. Dipole-dipole interactions. These interactions are weak interactions of the positive end of one polar molecule to the negative end of another polar molecule. These interactions align the molecules to increase the attraction and reduce the potential energy. The strength of the dipole-dipole forces increases as the magnitude of the dipole increases and the distance between the molecules decrease. For example, in HCl, a relatively positive hydrogen of one molecule is attracted to a relatively negative chlorine of another. Due to this interaction, polar molecules are held to each other more strongly than non-polar molecules of comparable size. There are two types. One is ion dipole, ion induced dipole force and then finally the hydrogen bond. Here we have examples for hydrogen chloride and ferrous oxygen. Here you see that a partial negative charge on chlorine is attracted towards a partial positive charge of hydrogen atom and the positive charge on ferrous is attracted to the partial negative charge on oxygen. Hydrogen bonds. These bonds are formed when a hydrogen atom bonded to a strongly electronegative atom exists in the vicinity of another electronegative atom with a lone pair of electrons such as fluorine, oxygen and nitrogen which are electronegative so that it is very strong dipole. The hydrogen partially share the lone pair in the molecule next to it. It is the strongest of the intermolecular forces. It is weaker than the covalent bond but is stronger kind of dipole-dipole attraction. In the figures below are the examples of water molecules that continuously form and break the hydrogen bonds between themselves. The hydrogen bond is formed between the partially negative charged oxygen with the partially positive charged hydrogen atom. Types of hydrogen bond. The hydrogen bonds could be either intermolecular variant or intramolecular variant. Intermolecular hydrogen bonding is formed between the hydrogen atom of one molecule with the electronegative atom of the neighboring molecule. Example, hydrogen fluoride and water. Whereas, intramolecular hydrogen bonding is formed between the hydrogen atom and the electronegative atom of the same molecules giving rise to ring size structure or the helix. So the classical example would be the DNA and the protein. The DNA helix is held together by the hydrogen bonds formed between the bases. There are two hydrogen bonds that are formed between thymine and adenine and three hydrogen atoms bonds between guanine and cytosine. In a protein, the alpha helices are stabilized or held together by a number of hydrogen bonds that are present within the entire stretch of the helix. Van der Waals forces. Van der Waals equation, also called as the equation of states, explains the properties of a real gas which was discovered by Johannes Diederik van der Waals. It's the weakest attraction between molecules. There are three types of van der Waals forces. First, London dispersion forces which are instantaneous ion or dipole induced dipole interactions. Second, we have the key sum interaction are also called as the dipole dipole interactions. And third, we have a D by force which is a dipole induced dipole interactions. London dispersion forces or instantaneous dipole induced interactions. London forces are named after Fritz London or also called Van der Waals forces. London forces are due to small dipoles that exist in non-polar molecules. The dipoles could be induced either by ions or dipoles. Because electrons are moving around the nucleus, there will be instances when the charge around an atom is not symmetrical, thereby resulting in tiny dipoles 
that cause attractions between the atoms or the molecules. This then goes on to induce a dipole on a neighboring atom temporarily. Greater the number of electrons, greater the dispersion. Given below is an example of the instantaneous uneven distribution of electron atoms on a helium. So what happens is there is a partial negative charge and a partial positive charge that is created to give an instantaneous dipole. This goes on to induce another dipole in a neighboring helium atom to give rise to a partial negative charge and a partial positive charge. These two atoms are now attracted to each other because of the opposite charges. Key sum interactions or dipole-dipole interactions. These are formed between permanent dipoles which can be either molecular ions or dipoles which are polar molecules or quadrupoles. These molecules tend to orient themselves in such a way that the partial positive charge of a molecule is close to the partial negative charge of other same type of molecule. Thus, there is minimum repulsion and maximum attraction between the two molecules. These interactions are temperature dependent. They tend to account for both the forces of attraction and repulsion that may exist between two molecules. A good example for this would be hydrogen chloride. HCl is a polar molecule. When two HCl molecules come close together, they tend to orient themselves in such a way that there is maximum force of attraction and minimum repulsion between them. Key sum interactions or dipole-dipole interactions. These are formed between permanent dipoles which can be either molecular ions or dipoles which are polar molecules or quadrupoles. These molecules tend to orient themselves in such a way that the partial positive charge of a molecule is close to the partial negative charge of other same type of molecule. Thus, there is minimum repulsion and maximum attraction between the two molecules. These interactions are temperature dependent. They tend to account for both the forces of attraction and repulsion that may exist between two molecules. A good example for this would be hydrogen chloride. HCl is a polar molecule. When two HCl molecules come close together, they tend to orient themselves in such a way that there is maximum force of attraction and minimum repulsion between them. D by force are permanent dipoles with induced dipole interactions. These are formed between a polar molecule and a molecule that can be polarized in the presence of the polar molecule. The ease of polarization of molecules increases with the size of the electron cloud and the size of the molecule. The polar molecule tends to shift or usually repel the non-polar molecule's electron cloud to one side of the molecule giving rise to an induced polarity. Molecules tend to orient themselves in such a way that there is maximum force of attraction between the molecules. In the example below, we see the interaction between argon and HCl. Just imagine a HCl molecule that has come close to argon. The chlorine which has a partial negative charge repels the electron cloud in a way that a partial positive charge is created on one end of the argon and a partial negative charge is created at the other end of the argon. This particular argon then is attracted towards a molecule of HCl which has a positive and a negative end. The polar positive end of hydrogen is attracted towards the partial negative charge on one end of argon and this is called as the D by force. Ion dipole forces. These are attractive forces that result from the electrostatic attraction between an ion and a neutral molecule that has a dipole. These molecules align in such a way that a positive and a negative groups are next to one another for maximum attraction. Ion dipole forces are stronger than dipole interactions because 
the charge of any ion is much greater than the charge of a dipole. The magnitude of these forces increases with 1. Distance between the ion and the polar molecule decreases. Second, magnitude of the charge on the ion increases. And third, these forces increase when the magnitude of the dipole of the polar molecule increases. A classical example is sodium chloride in water. The water molecule which is neutral is wedged between sodium and the chloride. You finally have an alignment in such a way that the partial negative charge on oxygen has an attractive force towards the positively charged sodium and the negatively charged chlorine is aligned in such a way that they are close to the partial positive charge on the two hydrogen atoms. Electrostatic forces or salt bridges. Electrostatic interactions generally provide about 40 kilojoules per mole of stabilization per salt bridge. In a drug DNA complex, they occur between the ionized phosphates of the nucleic acid and the positively charged groups of the drug. These are relatively long range forces. They are much stronger when there are no water molecules between the ionized groups because water has a high dielectric constant. In the presence of an external salt, the strength of the salt bridges decreases. In fact, it is a check to see whether interactions are of electrostatic nature or not by just increasing the concentration of the salt. In the presence of external salt, the electrostatic forces between the DNA and drug weaken and if very high concentrations are used, the salt bridges break. Salt bridges found on proteins. These are formed between the amino acid side chains with opposite positive or negative full electron charges. Typically, these salt bridges involve either lysine or arginine as a base and aspartic acid or glutamic acid as the acids. Amino acid with ionizable side chains that participate in salt bridge formations are tyrosine, histidine and serine depending on their pKa. The distance between the residues participating in the salt bridges should always be less than 4 am strong. Changes in the pH result in protonation of side change which disrupt salt bridges. Salt bridges work over longer distances than other interactions. Shown below is the interactions between two proteins which have a number of salt bridges between them. For further reading, it is suggested they go through the reference mentioned below. Having understood all the interactions, it is important to compare the energies that are associated with the intramolecular and intermolecular interactions. You have a scale which indicates weak, moderate, strong and very strong interactions or forces. We see here in a sequence interactions which are very strong to those that are very weak. First, we have the ionic bond which are very strong. Then we have the covalent bond, metallic bond, ion dipole, hydrogen bond, dipole dipole interaction, ion induced dipole interaction, dipole induced dipole interaction and finally London dispersion forces. The energies that are indicated on the scale are in kilojoules per mole. So students, Let's now summarize what we have learnt in this particular module. Attractive forces which hold constituents like atoms, molecules or ions in different species is called as chemical bond. The strength of chemical bonds varies considerably. There are what you call as strong bonds such as covalent and ionic bonds and weak bonds such as dipole-dipole interactions and van der Waals interactions. Covalent bond is formed by the mutual sharing of electrons between the participating atoms of the same or different elements. Whereas, 
ionic bond is formed by the permanent transferring of one or more electrons from the electropositive atom to the electronegative atoms. Coordinate bonds is a type of covalent bond with a shared pair of electrons in which both electrons come from the same atom. Metallic bonding arises from the electrostatic attractive forces between the conduction electrons and the positively charged metal ions. Intermolecular forces are forces of attraction or repulsion which act between neighboring particles of either atoms, molecules or ions. Salt bridge in proteins is a very good example for electrostatic forces that arise from anionic carboxylate of the acidic amino acid which could be either aspartic acid or glutamic acid and the basic amino acid or the cationic ammonium from lysine or arginine. Thank you very much.